Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Kawaii Britt and today we're going to be continuing on with my October series. This month the videos will all be Halloween themed and instead of verbalizing the steps I take to make my creations, I'm going to be sharing different spooky stories. My stories, my town stories, and other stories that just interest me. I'm aware that many of you may be skeptics, so if that's the case, I hope you enjoy the craft I'm making. And for those of you interested in history, haunts, and just plain spooky things, I hope you enjoy taking this adventure in the series with me. In today's video, we are going to talk about a few more locations in my hometown that are haunted. I did a poll among some of my local friends on haunted places I should share with you, and many suggested the Penn Common and the Old York County Prison. Both locations held many historic events, and it just makes sense that something residual remains. The first location we are going to talk about is called Penn Common. Since 1741, when the town of York was founded, Penn Common has been used as an area for public gatherings. Penn Common, now known as Penn Park, is a popular park in the city of York. It sits across from the William Penn High School and is always packed with the local kids and teens playing at the park or enjoying some basketball. Many locals don't know the dark history surrounding the park. In 1816, the common was deeded to the borough of York by the heirs of William Penn with the promise that it would be kept as a public common. The area is rich in history from General Mad Anthony Wayne using the area as an encampment during the American Revolution to becoming the site of a military hospital that held over 14,000 Union troops wounded and dead from the Battle of Gettysburg. It is said that General Wayne executed six men on this site. The account was first found in the diary of a musician named Samuel DeWeese, who claims to have witnessed the event. According to him, 12 soldiers stepped out of the ranks and persuaded the line to refuse to march. Wayne accused these soldiers of disgracing the army and called on the troops to either shoot him or the mutineers. They presented at the word, fired, and killed six of the men. One of the others, badly wounded, was ordered to be bayoneted. Wayne then marched the line by divisions around the dead and the remaining fellows were ordered to be hanged. So in total, six men were shot to death, one shot and bayoneted, and five were hanged. Today there are many claims surrounding various shadows and figures dressed in period clothing being seen in the park. Some say they are the ghosts of the many casualties from the Revolutionary and Civil War. Others say they could be the ghosts of the soldiers who are brutally executed. The second haunted location that I want to talk about today is the Old York County Prison. This is a location that is notorious for many haunts. The historic prison is now abandoned. It was built in 1906 and was decommissioned in 1979. Teens and adult ghost hunters always flock to see this dilapidated structure. Not even the fence or the no trespassing signs will keep anyone out. In the 1840s, the city of York saw its population nearly triple in size. People were coming from all over in search of work. Due to having only a limited population prior, York found that it was lacking in resources for all the new citizens. By 1845, York had already more than doubled in population and crime rates began to spike. To try and combat this, the York County Commission decided it was time to tear down the old jail from the 1700s and to construct a much larger stable and secure prison in its place. The York County Prison was built and opened in the late 1800s. It was originally a part of a complex of custodial buildings that included the York County Poorhouse and Hospital. The jail has a small courtyard, an unsanitary cafeteria, the outer appearance of a castle, and hand-constructed cells on the inside. In 1906, the castle-like facade was torn down and replaced with the fortress-like brick structure that currently exists. The new prison was designed by the architect B.F. Willis and even had a trapdoor where the hangings took place. The prison received some bad publicity in the 1950s, with reports of people being placed in padded cells to save on space, racial segregation during the night hours, bed bugs, and a report describing that the only meat served during a two-week period was venison from roadkill brought back by the police in an attempt to save money. 
The prison closed its doors in 1979 as the facility moved to a new location. The remaining building and land was then purchased in 1982. The family that bought the property considered renovating the jail into a privately run prison due to the rioting and overcrowding at Camp Hill State Correctional Institution, but the idea was dropped. Many different plans for the building have also been proposed over the year, including parking, a bar, nightclub, hotel, vocational school, community arts center, retail shops, loft apartments, a Halloween business, and even a prison-themed restaurant. The prison was listed back up for sale in 2007 and the asking price was never met. Today, a deteriorating building remains. The property is surrounded by a chain-link barbed wire topped fence. Inside, paint is peeling from the walls and ceilings. Many of the cells contain inmate art, historic artifacts such as the names of past officers, famous inmates, and even stories are etched into the walls. The walls are also donned with numerous amounts of graffiti from many trespassers that pass through the doors. The cell doors now hang open, its inmates are long gone. In the kitchen, all the old equipment is scattered about. And of course, with any abandoned building, there is evidence of squatters left behind. Many curious thrill seekers still manage to find their way in, despite the no trespassing warnings and the dangerous condition of the building. I can't tell you how many friends I have that have ventured their way into the prison. Most return with various scrapes and bruises due to the condition of the property. Not to mention the hurdles that one has to take to get into the prison itself. Ever since it was abandoned, there have been reports from visitors regarding paranormal activity. There have been many sightings of the ghosts of the former prisoners, and it is common for people to smell someone lighting a cigarette even though nobody in the building is smoking. Those who have visited the abandoned prison say that the spirits of the former prisoners will often follow you around. Are they looking for a way out? Or are they looking for a way to keep you in? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this October's theme. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button up there to be notified when my next video comes out. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are located in the description for you. I also stream. Check me out on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. My Twitch is also in the description. If you made it this far, hit the like button if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, would you be interested in hearing more of my ghost stories in the future? Thanks again for watching everyone. Happy haunting.